All right, let's see if I have enough for a video here. It's been a few days, and there are a few different reasons why I've not uploaded for the past couple. But uh, I, th I think combination of a couple of things here, I'm going to just try to throw something together. So uh, first of all, a word that's probably downvote worthy, and I don't really care. It sounds like something maybe that would be said by someone half my age, maybe even a third my age, and uh, at least as immature, because I am immature for my age. But uh, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just a big kid. But uh, uh, announcements, basically, uh, channel announcements, you know, sort of fudge, smushed together there. Anyway, uh, so I just want to talk about a few things, and then I'm going to try something here. Uh, so channel announcements. First of all, Hockey Bones was a New Year's resolution to try to play more Hockey Bones. And I realized so far, I think I played part of a game at the turn of the new year, and then another full game just past the, the new year. And now the year is almost a couple of weeks old, and I've not been back to it since. For which I would like to offer the lame excuse that as much as I enjoy playing this game... Uh, this game, like with any other hockey game, one thing that I don't enjoy as much as playing them is uh, keeping stats. And especially if I've already played a full game, but I do feel ob obligated for project stats keeping purposes to go, go back after the fact and uh, record shots on goal for each individual player and stuff like that. That is like an 80 minute long video that I did between Montreal and Toronto. And as a Habs fan, Montreal ends up losing the game 7-4. So there are all kinds of lame excuses that I can use for that one, which actually completely unrelated, but somehow reminds me that I want to talk a little bit about uh, this as well. I'm going to put this up and over here. So 2021, and then I'll probably forget to talk about it because that would just be fitting. I'm definitely not not tired right now, uh, but this is water in the mug, so and there isn't even a whole lot of it there. Mm. Anyway, uh, so hockey bones, I guess what I was trying to say is, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll talk about these couple first, and then I'll talk about why I'm talking about the first couple, uh, first and second. But so for hockey bones, and then as well for paradise, here's another thought that I had recently. I just... This is almost a fool me twice shame on me. The only project that I've ever committed to uh, start to finish but not finished so far since getting back into tabletop hockey playing was a project that involved Paradise Hockey. It's not that I don't like Paradise Hockey. I just don't think that Paradise is, uh, for me at least, right? For other people, it definitely you know could be, might be. But for me, it is not a full project replay conducive game. Uh, it's excellent for one-offs, and I'll maintain that it's underrated as a two-player game, which I think is where it can really shine through. But uh, it's it's just yeah. So with the WHL sixty-three, I feel like that project has practically the you know condensed replay has practically slowed to a sand standstill since I took over playing Paradise. So with Paradise, I'm going to play two more games. I'm going to get the game seventy-two of eighty of the regular season portion of the project, and then I'm going to scrap Paradise. At least until into the postseason, I'm going to play the final eight games in the schedule, all with Doc Hockey. Again, I still have the uh, Doc. Well, they're just off camera anyway. I've got enough stuff on camera with the 63 Doc Hockey cards there, ready to go for this project. I think I learned about Calico projects. Actually, another thought that I had much earlier was uh, by much earlier. I just mean earlier today before I started working. But um, I think with Calico projects, maybe if it were two games that were a little more similar, I think that Paradise Hockey and Doc Hockey, maybe they're a little apples to oranges too much. They're just a little too different, um, you know, relatively speaking. And so, uh, for instance, actually, another thought that I had was maybe if I did a project with Mike's and Doc. You know, Mike's and Doc, they're very similar games, except one uses playing cards and the other uses dice. Uh, I, I think that that would be an interesting you know to go back and forth sort of shuffle your way back and forth between those two engines and do like a full replay project i think that would be fun but paradise and doc they're just too different and so i have to realize with paradise again i enjoy the game and i think i respect the game even more than i like it just as somebody who's trying to design his own games and i'm getting to that I, I think that paradise is very it's well put together i think it's really intelligently meticulously thought out um and and it is a simple game, but I mean, even even within that, within it being a simple game, I think that, you know, in order to make a simple game work, you have to be quite economical with dice rolls. You have to be able to do a lot with a little. And so the fact that Harv Fury and I think also Andy Lewis and anybody that had a hand in working on this game, I think that they were really quite brilliant to put together what they did. But it's just, for whatever reason, it's not flowing with this Western Hockey League. And as I said, too, with Paradise, I do from a while back, getting back into tabletop hockey again, I still have an unfinished 63-64 full season replay, 
where I got a third of the way into it, just feel like I bit off more than I can chew. I've still played somewhere in the vicinity of 100 parad games of Paradise Hockey or more, so I can't really say that I don't like it if I played that many, even though I do have my frustrations and issues with it at times. And some of them I've been able to mod my way out of, but still... I just I really want to get back to playing this with Doc Hockey, actually. I, I look at uh, Dodger Ron's updates day-to-day, -day and he's since surpassed me big time with his own schedule. He's doing the full season replay, and uh, I, j I miss it. I miss playing 63 Western Hockey League. Maybe that's what it is, too. Seeing Ron's updates... I want to play 63 Western Hockey League uh, with, and again, that's not the junior WHL. That was the minor pro uh, hockey league WHL, kind of like a World Hockey Association a decade before it, kind of before its time, uh, was the Western Hockey League in 63. And I'm going to mention this again. I don't like to speak of my own game too, too, too much, and I don't want to tease or imply that it could be out anytime soon, but I just want to offer again as another perhaps lame excuse that one of the reasons why, again, I've not been at Hockey Bones the way that I said I would in the new year, and Paradise has kind of brought this project to a standstill just for time uh, concerns or whatever, is that I want to get this finished. And one of the main reasons actually why I want to finish Impact Play Hockey is because I have at least another well, I say two and a half jokingly, at least a couple of other games, hockey games that I want to get ready and get designed and, uh, and, and and work on. And so I just feel like I have to get impact play out of the way. I don't know if that's a right or good reason for wanting to finish a hockey game design or not. But because I've been kind of pushing to, to get this one at least closer to finishing, it's kind of taken away from some time to, to do some others. And I'm sorry about that as well. And I'm thinking that because I'm not doing as much playing, I'm thinking that now might even be an opportune time to start talking about game design, actually. And I might start doing that in some future upcoming videos, not just on impact play. I'll even show some, um, you know what, actually right now, let me tease one because I, uh, I was moving some stuff around, so... Here's a game that I guess I'll take out these couple of receipts. Uh, these are cards for St. Louis, I guess. These these are the non-copyright. Uh, uh, um, uh, I don't think that they're violating any copyright because uh, I took the logos and stuff off of them. But now that, that looks kind of pretty, if I do say so myself. This is one that I started designing way back in 2019. I, it didn't look quite like this in 2019. This is probably These are probably 2020 at some point. But uh, it might look nice, if I can say so myself. Mechanically, this is a crap game. <laughs> and I could never get it not to be crap. So, um, yeah. So, But, but just, uh, again, like I would kind of like to talk about this and maybe talk about some other, uh, some other games and some other stuff that I have on the go. And, you know, like what this rink is for, for instance. And there you can see the cards again individually. There's Jaden Schwartz. Numbers are hypothetical, so if you paid too close attention or close attention at all to the ratings there, don't look too much into them. They're at least part fudge. Anyway, so uh, I guess, yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, Hockey Bones, Paradise, Impact Play. What am I at? Eight minutes now. 2021 Clash of the Champions. I just want to say, in addition to the uh, more recent video that I did about the dock and the variants and some of my other recent videos as well, uh, and it isn't, you know, it isn't really necessarily why I do it, but I do notice it when I get it. And so uh, it goes without saying not only thanks to Brian, but thanks to anybody that, again, has given the time and given the support to recent videos, to a couple of live streams that I had. And uh, in the 2021 Clash of the Champions, uh, again, it was the 83 Boston Bruins, not the 63 ones. They're under this little whiteboard here. But uh, the 83 Boston Bruins and the 82 New York Islanders. And one quick observation that I had about this, that just for whatever dumb reason I feel like I want to express aloud, is that as a tabletop hockey geek, what got me about this, and it was a fantastic, I'm going to spoil it now, so spoiler forthcoming if that's on your to-watch list or whatever, I don't know. Um, if I you know, should assume anything like that. But anyway... Uh, the eight, the eighty three Boston Bruins were the champions of a, a project, a what if a what if project with Mike Owens, quick play for hockey, speak of the English, Patrick, and uh, and then the um, the eighty two Islanders, they were the champions of shootout project. So of course, when it came time for the clash, the eighty three Bruins got the better of the eighty two Islanders in the shootout portion of it, even though the Bruins were the Mike Owens uh, champions. 
And then when it carried over to the two Mike Owens quick play pro hockey games, the 82 Islanders in the Mike Owens portion of it, they battled their way back, even though they were the Shudo champions, not the Mike Owens champions. So I found that kind of interesting. But of course, because it is Boston on my desktop, you probably uh, can figure out if you've sort of followed the history of this at all. If you're familiar with what's happened, what's transpired over the course of this channel, what happens as a Habs fan, much to my chagrin again, when Boston gets on this desktop here. So um, anyway, finally, I'm, I'm going to play a game here at Doc Hockey. What am I just over 10 minutes into this now? And I was going to say thanks to Brian. I don't need to say a last name, I don't think. And I might not be able to pronounce your name, uh, last name correctly as well either. As someone who I also have a last name, that it's not unreal. But uh, it is a word that's in the dictionary that for some reason native English speakers have trouble pronouncing. And it's only five letters. But I'll leave it at that. It's, you know, you, teachers and stuff. I mean, by the time that, you know, I got the secondary school they'd try to say my name attendance day one at the beginning of the year and i just close enough I'd, I'd tell them and not bother and then that would bother them some of them but anyway uh that's uh, getting away from what i'm here uh, to, uh, for what i'm here to do so uh and i'm fighting fatigue as well so i want to play it this time this is a slightly modified i took a lot of brian's suggestions and i really really like he took the time to explain himself thoroughly brian thank you so much and uh, and, and bro really broke it down. And I'm not going to be able to repeat what he said verbatim or even well necessarily. But like, you know, the it, in the average game of Doc Hockey, the way that the engine is done originally, it's two and a half minutes uh, per sequence on average. And so that would average out, you know, four sequences is 10 minutes. And so if you're going four, three, two, one or one, two, three, four, where your four different sets or suits of cards adds up to 10, then that average is out to two and a half as well. And I'm going to throw a couple of little spanners, spanners, is that the right word for it? Throw a couple of things in there. Anyway, we'll go with things, <laughs> the universal all encompassing. Uh, jokers are going to be zero minutes all game because again, a joker is not really a heart club, spade or diamond anyway. Uh, diamonds will be zero in the final 10. It was suggested the final five. I'm going to go with the final 10 because otherwise in the final five, you know, if you get a heart or a club, it's just a little too... I don't know, anticlimactic or whatever. So I'm going to go with the final 10 for that and uh, just see what happens. And then for the rest of the game and for these top three here for all of the game, spades are one minute elapsed, uh, hearts are two minutes, clubs are three minutes, and then diamonds will be four for 50 of 60 minutes. And no, I'm not going to do do uh, overtime, even if it's tied. We'll just settle with the settle on the tie. So I hope I've covered everything here that I wanted to talk about. I'll have to put in the, the timestamp or whatever, about 12 and a half in. I'm going to start this game. So uh, let's have at it. And another thing that I like about doing Doc this way as well is uh, you don't have to worry about counting out 32 cards or anything like that. You're just going to simply flip and move for time. And the period, you, again, you don't have to worry about, oh, did I go through enough sequences of four? The period ends when the time says you, you know when when this clock here says that it ends and so uh to get things started here we're going to take three minutes off the clock here to kick things off this is detroit and boston 1967 red wings against the boston ruins i think these are the two teams that did make the playoffs that season and with the eight and we're going to go right to i'm not doing the home visitor thing so it's going to go uh the puck's going to go right to um Visitor uh, Dean Prentice here for Detroit. I looked at my candy basket. Yeah, I did play for Detroit. Uh, so Dean Prentice here at the eight. That means Apprentice is going to be able to play it through. And he's going to get it to nine, actually. I swear I shuffled these. I know it doesn't appear like I did. Uh, so Alex Del Vecchio. So uh, Del Vecchio with an eight. So Detroit immediately has a goal about three minutes in here. Uh, Del Vecchio from uh, Dean Prentice. And we'll get the secondary assist here, the seven of diamonds means uh, Andy Bathgate. Yes, so Bathgate does indeed play for Detroit. And uh, he has a point. He and Dean Prentice, who played for New York in 63. Anyway, we're going to take another minute off there with that Queen of Spades. And we're going to have a seven of hearts this time. Puck's going to go to Wayne Connolly there for Boston. And Connolly with a nine of clubs, also able to play. We're getting all the high cards early. We get another nine. Connolly, individual effort here. He's going to try to do it all by himself. The Queen of Hearts. We look at goalie Roger Crozier with the D, only on a king or a queen, of which the Queen of Hearts is. And so we get the quick tie. Quick tying here, uh, one minute later. So... We have a one-all game here already. Wayne Connolly from Wayne Connolly. And uh, the uh, nine of hearts means that Pitt Martin there with the secondary assist. Pitt Martin, who played with Detroit, uh, the uh, yeah, 67 so yeah, the following season. A lot, a lot of guys, actually, when you look at the original six, they they really they got around those six teams. 
That's why I didn't feel so bad or weird about redrafting two thirds of them for my 68, the thing that starts in 68 with hockey bones. Anyway, up to eight minutes we go here in the first period. And with a 10 of clubs, going to go back to Troy's way. Gary Bergman with possession here. Joker's an automatic fail there for the visitor. So uh, we're just going to say that it's been broken up here by the Boston defense. We're still eight minutes in, where we're going to take another three off with the uh, six of clubs there. And the 10, that's going to go back Gary Bergman's way. Bergman gets another shot, and ace is automatic. Ace to the six, that's Danny Bathgate, but with the five, he's unable to score. So another three minutes coming off the clock here now after that save by Eddie Johnston. And with the jack, and I don't do jack injury. Uh, and the main reason why I don't do jack injury, I mean, I could, I suppose, for a one-off uh, or a short tournament or competition or whatever, but for the season replays, it's already baked into these uh, team cards that some players will miss some time, so therefore I don't bother with the injury. Uh, so, uh, but with, so with that Jack of clubs, uh, it's going to be Ted Ham Hampson here with possession, part of the sh line for Boston and my 68 replay Hampson, Hickey and Sanderson. Anyway, Hampson with a three. So misplayed and another three coming off here. So we're up to 17 minutes now. This could be a shorter period and the seven of spades. So Detroit with a lot of possession here. And McGregor with the opportunity. He puts it through McGregor to Gary Bergman. Gary Bergman with the black jack. Eddie Johnson with the D only on the king or queen. Actually, E, the lowest, is only in a red jack. So uh, Joker means we're going to stay here with a few minutes to go. So we do get a Joker zero after all. King of clubs is going to be Mr. Hockey himself. And look at that. Gordy actually misplays it. Can't get to the puck in time. And we're going to take four minutes off there with the diamond. So because 17 and four is 21, what I do, if it added up to 20, I would look for one more play. But because it added up to 21, I'm going to call it intermission and say that it's an intermission. I do similar with shootout hockey, which I realize is not entirely how it's uh, written in the rules. I'm going to count the cards remaining because I think I used over half the decks. So we got 4, 8, 12, 16, 22. So I used 32 exactly in that period, which is, so I feel good about that because, uh, again, and Brian, I think, you know, if, if you're listening, could attest to this as well. You've got a one-all game, and 32 exactly is what you use, which is what you use to get through a period anyway. So if I didn't flip for assist, which I did, but, you know, it kind of works out uh, the same. So i um, going to be back back in a shuffle. And for the second period, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice here. I've been using it a lot today. Mm. Tuesday is the new Wednesday for me. Uh, not that it's interesting at all, but Tuesday is kind of the busier uh, day now. But again, it had been a few days, so... Uh, I'm going to do the cut and draw thing that I do with the shootout of fast action cards. I've decided as well for this. So uh, we're going to take uh, two minutes off the clock here to kick off period two. And uh, I, just, I just go high in the deck, low in the deck. And so with that three, it's going to be Bob Dilbo here for the Boston Bruins. And Dilbo with the three, so uh, he gets no further with it. So we're going to take another four off now because it's a diamond in the second period. And uh, that's how it's going to be the Joker. So anybody, choice in Boston, let's give it to Johnny Busick. And uh, Busick here with uh, the four. Oh, but he needs at least a six. So uh, the puck's turned over again here. Another couple minutes off the clock here. Now we're up to minute eight. And I don't know if I like the cut and draw as much with a smaller deck. With the thick hundred, you know, the, the thick, fast ash, action deck, I kind of like it. Uh, anyway, where was I here? Four and then two more off the clock. And so the king of spades, that's going to be uh, Gordy Howe with it. And uh, how with the jack? I don't think so. Boston team defense three and no blackjack. That wouldn't suffice anyway. So another minute off the clock here. Now we're up to minute nine. And uh, Joker. So once again here, it's going to be, let's give the Bobby Orr this time because he, Oliver, Westfall, a few of them there, all about the same. And Orr actually misplays it as well. So uh, we get three more off the clock now. We're 12 minutes into period two. Keep in mind, these were two pretty lowly teams then. You know, this could be the battle of least worst. But with the King of Hearts, it's going to be Bobby here with another try. Bobby with a four. So again, nothing doing there. And three more coming off the clock now. We're up to minute 15. And uh, the King of Clubs. So again, Gordy. Gordy with a try. Bobby with a try. Let's see here. Team defense of C. Only in a King or Red Queen. So Gordy Howe. He maneuvers it to 10. Paul Henderson in scoring position. Young pre-Toronto Paul Henderson, who puts Detroit up here by a goal uh, with five to go here in period two. Paul Henderson. Henderson from Howe. And uh, that two of spades corresponds with Del Vecchio. So Henderson from Howe and Del Vecchio same, seems or sounds plausible to me. Maybe Norm Ullman, uh, uh, you know, was, had the shift off. And uh, so it's going to be 2-1 here for Detroit. So two more here now. We're up to minute 17. And uh, we get the black ace there. That is to speak of Norm Ullman. There he is. Ullman's back in the ice, raring and ready to go. Team defense there. 
C, so it's only in a king or a red queen. So that's going to be taken away by the Boston defense. And three, so we will allow it right up to minute 20. One more play here in the second frame. And it's going to 10. Pitt Martin there for the Boston Bruins with the seven. Pitt Martin, he gets the puck to five, five. Murray Oliver, Murray Oliver with a shot. Six, that's going to be a narrow miss. Decent save by Roger Crozier. And that's not a joker. That's not a zero minute card. So uh, that's, uh, that's it for uh, two periods of play. And uh, I think I, I will probably, I'm huge, I guess I know to a lot of shuffle after 40, but I don't know if I like the cut and draw as much with, uh, again, with the deck of 54, as opposed to uh, to the deck of 100, the way that I do it with the shootout fast action cards, so that I don't have to shuffle uh, nearly as much with them. So anyway, uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's get things underway here for uh, period three. And again, this is not for, I'm not keeping... This, this isn't for the record for anything, for any project or replay that I have. I just thought rather than have Chicago beat Montreal again, uh, I would, uh, you know, because that's happening enough in real life. So, um, you know, spare myself a little masochism and uh, not have the halves in this one and to show other teams as well. So, okay. So to start the uh, third period here, we take just one minute off. I'm still, I'm, I'm tempted. That's like a habit now with the cut. What the heck? I'll do the cut and draw. So it's going to be eight here for Boston. That's going to be a uh, pie McKenzie. McKenzie with a two flubs it entirely. So we go, and one thing we haven't had is the two team player yet either. So we go with the Joker, which is a zero minute anytime. So we're going to stay just a minute in and that's going to be Gordie Howe there once more. Gordie Howe with a four, a narrow miss for Gordie Howe. Two more coming off the clock. Now up to minute three here in period three. You got to make a mental note of that 10 mark. Uh, five, that's going to be Tommy Williams with it. Tommy Williams with the ace. Ace is an automatic through. He gets it through to nine. Wayne Connolly, who scored already in this game. And it's Detroit 2, Wayne Connolly 2, single-handedly trying to keep the Bruins alive in this one. So Connolly evens the score here three minutes into period three. It was Connolly from Tommy Williams and the Ace of Hearts. It's going to be Johnny Busick. So um, way we go with it, I guess. You're taking three more off the clock now. We're up to minute six. And uh, that's going to be a nine of spades, which means it goes to Annie Bathgate. Bathgate here with the Red Queen. That will work against... Uh, Boston team defense. Bathgate, who also has a point in this game. Two, so I will have to flip and look for a team player. Uh, with the six, let's see, I'm dividing this up six ways. I'm going to say Parker McDonald there has it actually. So uh, it was uh, Bathgate to Parker McDonald, and we need an ace or a ten, and we don't get that. So another four coming off the clock. Now the final diamond where it will do it like that, where it will work like that. And six, that's going to be Paul Henderson, who's got a point looking for another. With possession, Henderson feeds it too. Again, another team player for the Red Wings. Let's take the bottom card there. The five of hearts. I'm going to say Howie Young this time instead of Parker McDonald. And Howie Young with the seven, he's unable to get through either. So uh, let's see here. Two minutes off the clock now. We are into the final ten. And we have a two-all game here. The Black Ace back to Norm Allman. Norm Allman with a four. That will just barely get through for him. And he gets it to Norm Allman. Norm Allman going end-to-end -end with the Ace. So Norm Allman. Second big chance for him in the game. And uh, we have a 3-2 game here. It's Allman from Allman, of course. And uh, that's going to be Bruce McGregor there. So Allman from Bruce McGregor. Uh, I showed in the other video how you could get exact time. I don't know of a way to do exact time with cards, but uh, I won't bother with that right now. Allman will say at 11.43 or something like that. Not that I did time for other goals. Anyway, two more off the clock now. Start off the minute 14. And uh, the queen of clubs, that's going to be Alex Delvecchio. And I didn't count how many I used in period two, but it feels like I'm going through a bit more here in period three. I guess, again, because I had to draw for the team a couple of times and stuff like that adds up. Plus, there have been what? few goals here in the third period, right? It was 1-1 one, one after two. Yes, I think. So, okay. So where was I? Uh, Alex Salvecchio with the puck, I believe. And with a 10, he's going to go through 10s as good as an ace in this game. So seven, that's going to be Floyd Smith. Pretty much always as good as an ace. And Floyd Smith, look at that. So uh, Detroit there, they double their lead. And it's Floyd Smith from Alex Salvecchio, right? Delvecchio, yeah. Floyd Smith from Alex Delvecchio. And uh, the second assist going to the Queen of Spades, if we have one. Yes, Ray Collin. Young Ray Collin there, also playing for Boston in my 68 redraft. Uh, so I say it like it matters to anyone. So it's going to go to, uh, no, or sorry, the no time's going to advance. I mean the Joker, it's that way all game. So Detroit here really looking to make a statement late. Gary Bergman, however, 
Uh, that's misplayed and Boston here with it. So another minute off the clock though. We're up to 15 now, five to go. And uh, that's gonna go to 10, 10, Pitt Martin there for Boston. Pitt Martin with the eight. And that goes to the Jack of Hearts there, Ron Stewart. Ron Stewart with a four. So I'm gonna take the top card because I'm running out of them. Uh, another three off the clock now with those are just two left in, in the uh, game. And uh, nine there, that is uh, Andy Bathgate. Or sorry, 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 no, nine, red nine. So Ron Shock there for Boston. Shock with the seven, he's going to get it through. And the six, six, Ron Shock again here, trying to do it all by himself, where even Crozier is going to be able to make the stop there. So let's see, we get another minute off the clock. I am really literally running out here. Uh, the Jack of uh, Diamonds is um, Ed Westfall. And uh, so Westfall here, he needs a six. He gets a 10. I'm just going to flip them in order now. To three, that is Jill Marat. And Jill Marat with the queen. Let's see Crozier, the D, only on a king or a queen. So Marat gets to within one. So uh, I'm going to do the cut and draw this time, actually. No, I can't. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so uh, with a minute to go here in the third. And what's this now? 25, 26 minutes. So let me see here. Uh, okay, so that that's going to advance it up to twenty one now. And shootout for the third, for the third, and only for the third and final period. Would I again check the sequence? And and I think that that it, it's a little different. And shootout, but anyway, that is somewhat in line with what's in the rules. Uh, so, but Gordy Howe has it anyway. So, uh, and I could consider as well maybe that the, the Boston net is empty. Uh, Sixty seven, yeah, was about good for that. So. How we're going to say through with it here. How gets it to uh, Ted Hampson. And uh, so it's basically going to be in the em open empty net or whatever. You could say Hampson from How here. And 5-3 uh, for Detroit. And we'll go with the secondary helper, the Diamonds. The two of Diamonds. How can't get two assists. So one actually in an empty net goal. One assist feels fine. So there you have it. 5-3 for uh, Detroit. So Boston uh, did not win on the desktop this time. The uh, 67 uh, Boston Bruins. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to try again, just going back to some of this stuff. I wanted to announce some stuff and uh, just uh, to follow this suggestion and kind of tweak it a little bit there on my own. But um, I don't know. I, I, I liked how that worked. I don't I don't know that I'll necessarily. I mean, right now I'm so far into uh, some stuff with Doc that I'm not going to change it for any official uh, project uh, replay play that I'm doing. But you know, for one-offs, just kind of to play around with it, you know, for the odd game. I'm not looking to change the way the Doc has played because I'll be honest as well. That's another thought that I had earlier, and I guess I'll end with it. Me trying to manipulate the Doc engine a little bit to have variable time instead of static time, that's not me saying that I necessarily dislike static time. I mean, I, I do like the element of unpredictability of not knowing if one, two, three, or even four minutes or zero minutes are going to uh, transpire. And especially late in the game, it feels in line with like usually you get those couple of timeouts if it's like a you know a one goal game or maybe even a tie game and uh, so you get the timeouts and then you get a lot of like if the goalie is pulled a lot of icing uh, from the team that's ahead and stuff like that so the zero minute actually feels kind of like the, the flow of a hockey game to me at least late but I, I actually like it sometimes. One thing that the one thing that is one thing that is different about Doc hockey that I like sometimes is that um you know exactly when the game will end. Like sometimes with shootout, you know, for instance, if you get a lot of the zero minute cards and the one minute cards, the period can feel like a bit of a slog, even though it is a bit of a faster playing game. And that's not the fault of the engine. I'm glad that those cards are in there. That's just how they flip out sometimes. Similarly with Mike Owen's Quick Play Pro Hockey, I'm very glad that the one is in there. The die roll, the white die roll of a one where you're only advanced, you're only advancing zero minutes. You are advancing zero minutes. You're, you're not advancing any time, I guess. And, uh, and again, I mean, I, I like that that's there, but what that does mean is that sometimes the way that a game rolls out is it can maybe take annoyingly a little longer than a, than a quote unquote fast, you know, playing game should, but that's not really the fault of the engine. I'm glad that that's in there. I'd rather have it in there than not. But similarly speaking with Doc, you, you kind of know when a game will start and end. And so Doc Again, playing it as best as it's, you know, written in the instructions, uh, you know when a game will start and end. You can set your watch to it, more or less. I mean, yes, if there are a lot of goals, it will slow it down. But there are no penalties in Doc either. Same with Mike Owens. Uh, Michael Owens' is a game, his quick play pro hockey game. And, uh, and what was I going to say there? So... 
uh, you, but for the most part, you you know when a game will start and end. And so Doc is a game that I really like to play sometimes in between things, you know. I would say actually between the three of them, if you have 10, 12 minutes to spare at most between Shootout, Mike's, and Doc, I would go with Doc. And that's not to say anything bad at all about Shootout or Mike Owens. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I Doc definitely, there's a little, again, as it's written in the instructions, there's a bit more of a guarantee with Doc of what time a game will start and end. Again, albeit with the exceptions, if there's more goals, then, but I don't know, even with a goal, it's just one extra card flip right for assist and so anyway um anytime any consideration you give to uh, you know this video or any other like it here on this channel well it's never expected it's always greatly appreciated and sorry again that i'm a bit tired and a bit rambly but uh, i'm not forcing anybody to watch or listen and i just wanted to get on camera talk about a few things and i felt like i've been overdue to try this out and thanks once again brian again for like taking the time to just sort of articulate and go through bit by bit and just really kind of explain yourself in full. I really do appreciate, you know, you taking the time to, uh, it, and it was multiple comments as well. So again, thank you very much uh, for those. And uh, yeah, hope you liked it. Anyway, cheers, thanks, and bye for now.